Hi everyone, my name's Sophia from Art by Sophia. We're going to be painting an abstract B, the one that's in the picture. We're using New Gamboge, Aussie Red Gold, Payne's Grey, Yellow Ochre and Quinacrinone Gold. So we're going to spray a lot of water down on the page just randomly. I just use a normal spray bottle. I'm picking up some of the uh, New Gamboge uh, and Yellow Ochre and I'm just lightly tapping it down. So I've already planned out and thought about the way and layout of the B. Um, I've got a couple of reference photos there of bees to help me um, get the stripes right. So flicking down the paint, um, we've got the three stripes, the one at the, the top um, closest to the head, the middle body, and then there's a little bit at the, um, the base. It's a little bit too much water, uh, meaning the yellow is sort of going across the page. I'm just absorbing some of that water using a little bit of paper towel. And then picking up more yellow paint, sorry, that's a um, silver size 16 brush and I'm just dropping down to a smaller brush um, to help, I guess, try and get some better placement of the paint. Using a combination of a flick and a tap, um, the flick gets a more sporadic paint coverage, whereas the tap gets a more direct coverage, but still um, both creating quite an abstract look. So building up with a lot of yellow ochre and new gamboge. Um, and now I'm adding in the Aussie red gold and the quinacridone gold um, to help create depth by adding darker colours and shadowing um, on the, the side. So this bee is kind of, um, its head is towards the left-hand side of the page. It's kind of curved around a little bit. And you'll see that when we start to put in the wings. Um, using the paintbrush to sort of fill out a little bit of colour, um, adding a little bit more yellow ochre in. And you can see those distinct lines. This is just water, um, so adding more water by the flicking effect, flicking effect and that's adding, um, I guess, more texture to it, creating water marks and water patterns. I'm now picking up the Payne's Grey um, and I think it's a really beautiful colour for this. I'm doing a little bit of flicking and a little bit of sort of putting paint down where I know I want it to go. Um, and then I'm going to start building on that. It's sort of a balance between letting the paint and water do its thing but also not letting the um, Payne's Grey overpower the entire painting. Um, so you can see again I'm flicking it. Um, the third flick on the far left is the head um, and you've got the two middle um, stripes as well. So adding a little bit more black um, on the bottom side of the page, which is that sort of shadowed area you can see from the um, quinacridone gold. That's where I've sort of tried to place that. Um, the B has a lot of length, but not a lot of width. So that's what I'm going to start working on now is, is getting a B that's a bit wider. Honestly, it's pretty forgiving. Um, you can see as you watch me here, um, you know, a little bit too much black running through um, sorry, a little bit too much paint grey running through, so picking that up with the paper towel, always have paper towel or a cloth on hand. Um, adding more water, flicking it around, um, and then I'm going to start adding more colour again so you can sort of see where I'm putting that paint grey in. It's about letting the paint and the water do its thing, but also then still having some level of control over it um, so that it doesn't go too far out of where we want it. So adding in um, some more Aussie red gold, and that's a Daniel Smith Aussie red gold, um, into the, the shadowed areas of the paintings to create depth. It's really important that we do create light and shadow um, to indicate that this is not a flat object. Now with um, water only on my brush, I'm starting to build in the wings. Um, and so what we're going to find is the paint is going to flow into where the wings are going to be. I'm using the paper towel now to dab it up um, and that's going to help make them transparent um, as wings, you know, generally are transparent. Um, the water is going to do its thing. The paint will run into it. And again, you'll see me a number of times um, throughout this video picking up that excess paint um, out of the wings so that we try and create a really soft, um, airy look. Um, and, you know, the, the next parts of the video are me really just adding colour and paint 
um, a combination of flicking, splattering, dabbing. Um, I'm adding in the the feet um, and a little stinger on the end and splattering more water around. You can see the feet are just, or the legs are just starting to run a little bit. Um, the black in the midsection, um, sorry, the paint's grey in the midsection um, is feathering out into the wings and just dabbing that up again um, with that yellow ochre to try and really keep a transparent wing with a really soft edge. Um, that's super important is to keep that soft edge between wing and body to sort of signify the movement um, without a distinct line. Darkening the colour with more Payne's grey. Um, if you don't think it's dark enough, you can add like a neutral tint in there. I would really recommend against adding black. Um, I very rarely use straight black in a painting. Um, I prefer Payne's grey, indigo or neutral tint. Um, and often when I use neutral tint, um, which is Daniel Smith colour, I will actually add into that, you know, a purple or a blue or something just to take the edge off it. Just creating a little bit more shadowing um, around the bottom side of the, the body in the mid there. And you can see me put the paints grey down, soak a little bit of it up and then add some quin, um, not quinacridone, sorry, Aussie red gold over the top of it. Um, just trying to create more depth there um, and starting to try and pick up a little bit of colour and paint um, around the head. And create a little bit more depth and I generally am picking up paint when I feel like the paint grey is overpowering the yellow um, or I've kind of made it a bit muddy. So at this point I'm adding the two um, ant antlers, that's the wrong animal, tentacles, tentacles, the um, little bits that I guess they use to uh, sense what's around them. Name has completely eluded me right now. Sorry. Um, lots of water, lots of splattering. You can see me splattering on here. I'm not really concerned about where it's ending up at this point. Um, there's still a lot of water there. It's still doing its thing. Um, so I'm really happy with how that's going. Adding more um, Payne's Grey to add more darkness. Um, and you can see when I'm moving the paintbrush around how wet it is. Um, I have kind of picked up that um, stinger at the end. I ended up not really liking it. And you can sort of see in the painting that there's a bit of a curvature of the bee. Um, not only angled sort of around um, lengthways, but a little bit under as well. Um, Lots more paint, that's Payne's Grey again splattering. Picking it up off the wings because I really want, um, where possible, that transparent look. Uh, and if you refer back to the start of the video when I showed the finished painting in that right-hand side where you can start to see a lot of melding coming out, that stays in the painting, like that sort of um, blurred into the background um, type of look that you get from you know a lot of water um, to water down the watercolours. Again, adding more colour. And you can see how many, I mean, without counting layers, you can see how many layers I'm sort of starting to add in here to create depth, letting the water do its thing, picking up and guiding it, um, and then adding more colour where needed. I sort of started to lose the, um, the yellow at the back of the bee. Um, so I'm just dabbing up a little bit of the, the Payne's Grey and starting to add... Um, a little bit more um, yellow ochre and quin gold in. Flicking, as you can see. Um, I tend to, when I'm sort of flicking paint around, if I'm trying to protect an area, I usually just use my hand or my arm to protect that area rather than putting a whole sheet down over it. Um, it works reasonably well. It's quite messy, but works for me. You can see I'm just sort of really um, letting the water and the paint do its thing and that's really important um, is to watch as it continues to sit and dry the paint will still move um, and so you really need to be watching it as it's drying um, if you like watching paint dry. Um, this is definitely the painting for you. Um, if you just walk away from it at this point you're going to end up with a completely different look because the water and the paint have both done their thing. 
I'm just adding a little bit more um, shadowing and outlining, I guess, to the, the wings. And you can see me blurring the edge. Um, but trying to give the hint of the wing without having to go into all the detail of the wing being there. The water and paint um, doing its thing creates those nice veiny looks that we have naturally through the wings. Um, and so that's, a, I guess, an easy way to create that vein look um, without going to the effort of trying to draw veins into the bee. Again, once more many times, adding the layers of paint in, um, splattering on some black. You can do it by either sort of throwing it um, at the painting, which you'll see me do early on in the start, or tapping it against your other hand or another brush to sort of create finer um, splatter, if you like. So if you sort of use a big brush, lots of water, you're going to get big um, big pools of water and splatter um, across your page, the smaller the brush. And I'm down to sort of a size, I think it's a four or a six um, at the moment. So, you know, really just not trying to get too involved in the painting, but to, you know, help guide, um, guide it. You can see there that I um, removed a fair bit of, of the Payne's Grey and that's because it was starting to get too muddy um, mixing with that. Um, the yellow colours so just trying to keep some ounce of control I've put it in it's got hard lines so I'm just splattering to soften the lines a um, little bit of um, Aussie red gold as well as the Payne's grey and you can really start to see that pooling up the top side of that stripe that I just put in with the water um, and I really liked that effect part of me was going to you know dab the whole thing up and then the other part of me was like no you know what let's just see what happens uh, and a lot of this is about experimentation. Um, for me, I'm always really keen to see what the water and the paint will do and how every time we do this, we end up with a different result. Not every bee painting um, I do like this will work. Um, and I kind of accept that. And if that's the case, then I either clean that paper. That's an Arches 300 GSM um, hot press paper in a block. Um, and, you know, you relatively easily you can clean that off. Um, or wash it off if you like and then start again. You can see me using my hand here to cover the wings um, and the end of the bee with the splatter. And you can also use, you know, um, paper or cloth or whatever to cover bits of the painting, but um, just kind of like to get involved and, involved and get messy. Dabbing up again, that... Um, paper towel is getting quite wet um, so you'll find if you use a super wet paper towel eventually you're going to start leaving the colour that's on the paper towel behind um, so just be mindful of that if that's not the effect you're wanting to go for I'm just adding you can see on the the leg sorry before I added a little bit more um, shadow and highlight and so I you know add the shadow by putting a little bit of a darker colour on the edge of it I'm um, very gently adding in um, a little bit more yellow, a little bit of splatter. Um, again, the colours were getting too muddy for my liking, so just pull a little bit up and, and relay it. This is probably not the, um, the correct terminology or technique. I am self-taught, so I do try and do um, the best I can. I do like to experiment as well to try and see, you know, what's going to work for me and, and how do I find my style. Um, so that's still an important part of my art journey is I want my own style and um, at the moment I'm absolutely loving this. Um, so picking up the, the page and sort of moving it around a little bit um, helps spread the water, the paint out. Um, you can see in the, the second black stripe from the head um, or the black stripe after the head, um, quite a large pool um, of Payne's Grey there and I'm also then spreading out that colour to soften the edges again. Um, so I can try and avoid hard edges so the, you know, the wing kind of just comes out from the body without being too distinctive. Um, a lot of painting is about imagination. A lot for a viewer is about having the imagination to view um, what's missing or create in the painting what they're not seeing. I'm 
just wanting to darken that little bit of um, the wing just sort of as it's coming out from the body. So you can see me, I put the paint spray down, spread it a little bit um, and then soak a little bit of it up with the paper towel. I'm just pushing the wing slightly further back into the body. Um, you can see that the, the angle of the bee is, I guess, um, meaning that more of that wing should be showing against the body. Um, it's not um, not to scale in any way, shape or form. Um, this is about giving the suggestion of the bee more so than painting a hyper-realistic picture of a bee. Um, I'm now using my um, heat gun to just dry a couple of areas where I'm going, all right, I don't want any more movement in those areas. So the heat gun will help me do that. Um, it is not drying the entire page, but it's drying parts of it. So especially the wings um, and sort of around the back of the bee, that pool of water you can see on sort of the top right hand side, I don't really touch that with the dryer. And you can see from the sheen of the paper um, that it's still quite wet. Um, but for me, this is about trying to stop um, mo movement of paint where I'm happy for that paint to be, if that makes sense. Once you've gotten to that stage, it's kind of like you can't undo. Um, so once you're, I guess, going through the drying um, component of the painting, this is pretty much it. If you start adding water on top of that, um, you're going to create quite definitive watermarks um, which I'm sure will create quite a lovely effect um, but you just need to be aware of, of potentially what the effect will have if you dry it mostly and then add more water. I'm dabbing up to again soften where that wing meets the body. So this wing here is kind of coming from under the body it's kind of like it's tilted away from us um, and so we're seeing more of this front wing um, where my hand just was. This is a paper towel this is sort of um, I guess I'm running out of paper towel um, to use with that one very shortly. I'll probably have to get a new piece, but just dabbing up very gently um, to again soften that wing. So this is the point where you want to be looking and assessing and going, yep, I'm happy with this. Are there any final touches? You can see the bee is sort of elongated around, um, not anatomically correct, but I guess I'm giving you the feel of the bee um, and the rest of it um, is up to the imagination of the viewer. So I just want to say thank you so much for um, watching this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. And if you have any questions, please reach out.